What's up guys? It's me, Sir Ernest, and today we're going to solve problem 7.23 of Griffith's 4th edition. The problem reads, A square loop of wire of side A lies midway between two long wires, 3A apart, in the same plane. Actually, the long wires are sides of a large rectangular loop. But the short ends are far away, are so far away that they can be neglected. A clockwise current I in the square loop is gradually increasing by a constant amount K. So we find the induced EMF or the EMF induced in the big loop. And we want to determine which way will the induced current flow. Okay, so in this case we have, as I mentioned, as mentioned her here, that we have a square loop. Of side A. And then on top and below that are your two long wires, which is part of a large rectangular loop. Okay, so we are going to consider this to be an uh, infinitely long wire relative to this uh, square loop these two sides of this long rectangular loop will not uh, affect our calculations okay aside from the fact that it will help us determine the direction in which the induced current flows so here the direction of the loop or uh, the current in the small loop would be in this direction Okay, so what is now the current here and here? So we are going to do that by first setting that, as mentioned here, the derivative of the current in the wire, in the square loop, is constant and it is positive. Okay, so we know that the induced EMF in the big loop is given by the negative derivative of the flux on this wire on the on uh, flux on the wire on the large loop with respect to time and we know that the flux is given by the magnetic uh, the Mutual inductance M times the current in the in the small loop. So this is equal to negative M times the derivative of I with respect to time. So this current I is the current in the small loop. And therefore this is equal to negative M K because this derivative is equal to K. Now uh, the flux through the small loop, on the other hand, okay, is now given by, let's call it flux prime, and this is given, is this is equal to m times i prime, where i prime is the flux, is the current induced in the big loop now the magnetic field due to the long wire okay it's given by b equals mu naught i prime over 2 pi s where s is the distance from the wire to your loop to, your, to the point where you want to calculate your uh, magnetic field and I prime is the current in your wires because this belong this wire belongs to one big wire of, uh, uh, that is looped therefore the current flowing in this direct in this wire is the same as the current flowing in this wire except that the direction of the current here will be opposite the direction of the current here 
and that will help us determine the overall current flow or the direction of the current flow. So therefore, the total flux through the small loop is uh, given by 2 times the current at the flux through the loop due to one of the wires. So let's call it 1. Because the flux provided by this on the square loop is the same as the flux provided by this. That's why we can add them together. Also, the magnetic field is the same. And they're pointing in the same direction. And that direction is along the axis perpendicular to this plane. So, this equation or this expression can now be written as 2 times the integral of B dot DA, where DA is the area element of your square loop. Okay, so this is done by allowing the current flowing through the big loop and the flux through the little loop is this one. Okay, so now let's calculate this. So this is now equal to 2 times mu naught I prime over 2 pi S times A D S, where A D S is the area element. Remember that the magnetic field, as I mentioned, is perpendicular, is perpendicular to the to this plane, and the area element D A is also perpendicular to this plane. So therefore, their dot product will now be A simple multiplication. Okay. So D A will be A D S. And then, for example, if this is x, y, that's positive z or negative z. So that's z hat. So we're just, we're just looking at the flux. Now, solving this, we now have uh, 2 will cancel. So mu naught and i prime are constant. Pi is also a constant as well as a so this is now mu naught i a over pi times the integral of d s over s okay so that's from a to 2 a for this side which is the same as from a to 2 a from this side so this is from a to 2 a so this is equal to mu naught i a over pi times ln 2a over a so that's ln 2 so this times ln 2 and this is equal to m i prime and this is i prime and this is i prime so therefore the uh, the mutual inductance therefore is equal to uh, mu naught a ln 2 divided by pi. So using this magnetic, uh, this uh, mutual inductance here, the induced EMF therefore will now be equal to uh, mu naught A K ln 2 over pi so here we're looking for the we're just determine the magnitude now how about the direction so the direction of the em induced would be the same direction as your current induced current so by Lenz law because the current in the small loop is in this direction in clockwise direction so therefore the direction of the induced current would be counter clockwise okay 
So if we're going to uh, uh, relate this here, so this wire will now have a current in this direction. So let's call it current I prime. And in this wire, the current will be in this direction. Okay? So that's it. That's the full solution for problem 7.23 for Griffiths. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something today. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.